Welcome to our Wednesday night time in the Word with our pastor and founder, William Whitfield. Now, let us prepare our hearts as we go. Into Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Pastor Whitfield coming to you on this Wednesday, February 4th, 2014, welcoming you to our weekly Wednesday night time in the Word broadcast. Today, we're going to be continuing on a subject that I've been teaching on for quite a period of time, but not consistently on social media, but in the other Bible studies that I teach throughout the course of the week. Uh, but today we're going to be going to Exodus, the 32nd chapter, the 15th verse, and we're going to be extracting from the life of Moses and Aaron and the children of Israel in the wilderness and that in that experience as they're walking before the Lord and the Lord is doing some new things in them. But also we're looking at the hearts of the people uh, throughout the course of this series of lessons and the things that God is doing for them and also taking that ill mentality that the people of Israel had when they were in, in captivity in Egypt for all those long 400 plus years. And now that they have been set free, there are some things that are still in their hearts that God has to deal with. And it also shows us, even us who are walking in the Lord, those things that God has to deal with, even in our own personal lives from time to time. Now, we can all see ourselves in the pages of the scripture if we would be open and honest with ourselves and focus on the things that God has in store for us and the things that he's trying to show us, even about ourselves and even us that are in leadership in ministry, and those of us who are in leadership in any capacity, uh, whether it's secularly or whether it's uh, in the Christian faith or whether it's part of an organization, there are things that we all must be held accountable and liable for as we progress, even especially in our walk with the Lord coming to maturity, especially that of a leader or even a follower. But tonight we're going to be talking more so on potential leaders preparing themselves for leadership. So let us pray as we go into the word of the Lord, but I also ask that you please have your Bibles handy. So as we go in the word of the Lord, we'll go in the word of the Lord together so you can see exactly what we're reading. So again, if you like to place us on pause where you could get your word and sit down with us so that we can explore the word of the Lord together. And while you're doing so, if you choose not to place us on or pause, just know this, that we love you here at Faith, Hope, and Love Ministries and Retreat Services International, and we just want the people of God to grow and mature by the word of the Lord unto you. Also, we want to just mention that if you're liking what you're hearing, consider subscribing to our channels and telling your family members and friends about us that the word of the Lord is preached, is being preached on social media where they can access it 24 hours a day, seven days a week to hear what God is saying. And we are blessed by the comments that many of you have left uh, on our Facebook pages even on YouTube and various other sites, we are so appreciative for those of you that have emailed us and even those that have texted us. Uh, we are still appreciative of that. And send your prayer requests in so that we can pray for you as well. So let us go on to the word of the Lord without any further ado. Let us pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for this, your word. We thank you for your loving kindness towards us. We thank you for the ability to be able to go into your word and hear and see what it is that you have to say to us. Now, Father, as always, send your anointing because without your anointing, we can do nothing. We pray that you would open our ears to hear and anoint us afresh, that we could communicate accurately and fervently those things that you're saying to us to say to your people. And we are grateful unto you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now I'm going to the word of the Lord, Exodus, the 32nd chapter, verse 15 and 16, is where our launching path will be today. And it says, And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hands. The tables were written on both their sides, on the one side, and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God graven upon 
the, t the tag tables. Now, many of us who have watched the Cecil B. DeMille's Ten Commandments or have seen other versions of the Ten Commandments only show the, the two tablets that were hewed out of the rock as only being written on one side. But here the scripture lets us know very clearly that God had written the law on both both sides of the tablets, of the two tablets, so four sides, there were writings from God that were written by the finger of God, through his word and commandment unto men. But the Bible speaks nothing of the Ten Commandments in this particular chapter, not until you get to chapter 34, in the 38th verse, does it even talk about what was actually written on the tablets of stone? And in Exodus 24 and 12, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to, the, um, come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tables of stones, and a law, and a commandment which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. And in verse chapter 34, uh, ch verse 28, it reads, and he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights, and he did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. This is after chapter 32, where Moses now is descending the mountain because God had made God has made him aware of a situation that has that is occurring right in this particular moment in the camp of Israel that required the urgency of God to make Moses aware of what was transpiring and for Moses to descend the mountain of God to go down to address it because God's anger is now burning against his people because now they have created and crafted a golden calf to worship. Not only are they worshiping, but they made a proclamation to have a celebration unto this newly forged God to lead them through the wilderness experience and their perception of what the promised land should be because they did not know what had transpired with Moses. Moses had been on the mountain of God for 40 days and 40 nights in the presence of the Lord while God was speaking to him, giving him explicit instruction in detail on how to lead the children of Israel and what to do for them and what was necessary for them to be able to come to a place in God in those things that God was requiring of them in their servitude unto him, their worship unto him, how to follow him through the laws of God and how God wanted to instill in their spirit, man, over a period of time, his words so that they would know what would please the living God and that they would not walk according to the death nature or the deadness of their flesh or their lack of a relationship with God. God was bringing them out into the wilderness. Notice the words that he said to Pharaoh, set my people free so that they may serve me. Now that they're set free, God wants to teach them and instruct them on how they must serve him, but they cannot be distracted by temptation or by the sinful nature or by their previous nature or existence. They have to release from their lives, from their psyche, from their hearts, from their memory banks, so to speak, from the stored up data that was erroneously downloaded by their negative experience so that God can free them to have the mentality to possess the promised land. Many of us don't possess the promised land because we lack the freedom in the thought processes of our minds to be able to walk in the freedom of the sons of God. But God wants us to be free. So, verse 17 of chapter 32, it says, And when Joshua, when Joshua heard the noise of the, of the people, as they shouted, he said unto Moses, 
There is a noise of war in the camp. Now, let's deal with this. Joshua, who is Moses' servant, is still yet being groomed to ultimately take on a position of leadership. But notice his skill to discern properly and effectively what's going on still lacks maturity. His connection to God isn't there as of yet. But yet Joshua has enough respect for God and for Moses. The one crucial thing he does is he yields to the senior person who has that connection with God to hear what it is that they have to say and base his reactions and comments on that of a leader who has been properly groomed to lead God's people. And the people, and he, and he said unto Moses, a, there is a noise, a war in the camp. Being able to properly distinguish the sounds that are coming from God's people for a leader is crucial, especially a spiritual leader. It is extremely vital and crucial that we understand and discern the sounds that are coming from the people that we may perceive in our ignorance that is one thing, but God is exposing it or revealing it to be something quite the opposite of what we really see. Now, there are times when we may think that we hear the sound of praise when it comes, when it's a sound of guilt, sin, or of one hiding from their past, or their presence, or the realities of their lives. And it's not a sound of worship or a sound of praise. Sometimes there is a tainted sound in the worship that is coming out of the mouths of God's people when we can think that is pure worship, but there is something more behind that sound that needs to be in that moment investigated further, praying in the moment and asking God to reveal what really it is that we hear. The sound of worship has a sound of sweetness. It's not agitating. It's not vexing. It does not cause you to feel ill. It makes you feel as though the heavens have descended down in the midst of you and has delighted itself in you and in the people of God. But when there is a sound that is undistinguishable, a sound that is not easily discernful, a sound that brings agitation and vexation and troubling to your spirit, that is not the holy sound that God is looking for. But it's the sound of something that is coming from a source less than godliness. Discerning sounds in the spirit is crucial to ministering to souls in the kingdom. Because the proper discerning of the song, sound will let you know what you're dealing with. And how to minister to the persons to whom you're ministering to. And it will open up your eyes to be able to see what God is seeing. And seeing things that no other ones can see. There are often the times when people are praising or worshiping. You can hear the sounds of hurt. The sounds of pain, the sounds of disappointment, the sound of depression, the sound of fear, the sound of anger, the sound of bitterness, the sound of oppression, or the sound of being run over 
by the enemy. There's also times that you can hear in the praise and in the worship, the purity of the heart to honor God, the trust, the faith, the confidence, the devotion, the oneness, the righteousness, the cleanliness of the heart. You can even hear in the worship when one is repentful, sorrowful, remorseful, happy, joyous, jubilant, victorious. And when one is a warrior and a conqueror, when one has stood through a trial of test and have overcome, and have overcome the challenges of life extremely, extraordinarily well. And they are delighting themselves in their God, in their Savior, in their Sovereign. They are rejoicing in the fact that He has brought them through. And they are so grateful for the healing virtue, the sustaining power, the protection, the comfort, the love, the promptings, and the word of the Lord that has gotten them to a place of stability, strength, and honor. You can hear volumes of information just by when people open up their mouths and what they do in the presence of of the Almighty God, you will be fascinated and amazed when God begins to open up sounds in your ear gate to be able to hear where people truly are and to be an effective leader in the kingdom of God. As we stated earlier, this is a vital necessity. It cannot be ignored. When a skillful leader understands the sound that comes from a move of God or from the people, they are launched into action. Now understand that that action may mean there is something that you may need to do. Or it may mean that you leave the people in the continuous state of praise. A continuous state of worship until the presence of the Lord has lifted. Or it may mean that you may have to labor with ministering to souls, encouraging them, motivating, exhorting them, laying hands on them, working with them till they get through and have a breakthrough where the yokes are destroyed. And the spirit of heaviness is lifted by the spirit of God. Knowing even the sound of when prophecy is to, be, is to come forth. Realizing the distinguishing impact of the sound of worship. Knowing the sounds when the enemy is moving on God's people or through God's people. Knowing the sound of warfare and sin in the camp. We must know when the people are under warfare. And we also must know when there is sin in the camp. We as Christian leaders, men and women of God, cannot effectively perform our task and job and assignment by the hand of God if we're not willing to deal with sin in the camp. Too many times we have too many leaders that are too passive to this vital issue. And things have been allowed to run rampantly in the body of Christ, in the church, and even in us as leaders because it has gone unchecked. Someone did not have the courage or the God strength, or the Spirit of Christ with them to address the ills that lies within our midst. If we want to be effective according to the scripture in the book of Ezekiel, when God tells him that if you fail to forewarn a man of his sins 
and he dies in it, his blood will be required of you. But if you forewarn a righteous man and he turns from his ways, then you would have saved him and you will not be held accountable for his blood. So the sounds of the people of God. Tune in bi-weekly on social media to hear the word of the Lord through Pastor Woodfield. Join us and be empowered by the word of the Lord unto you. Many of the servants of the Lord miss the sounds because of they are not sensitive enough to the Spirit of God. They're not sensitive to the things of God. And they spend less time in the presence of the Lord. Their prayer life isn't where it should be. And their senses haven't been trained or matured. Because how senses in the spirit are trained and matured is by the prayerfulness of a leader to pray specifically for the will of God to be accomplished in their lives and targeting those things that are necessary and needful in one's life for God to increase. To increase them in. For instance, if you know that you're not as sensitive and you're missing things and then you're noticing things that are going awry, then what you need to pray for is God sensitize me and show me by the Spirit and cause me to see what is really going on here. Cause me to pray and fast and put me on prayers and fasts until my eyes have been enlightened. Until you have spoken to me. Call me away with you, God. Show me through your words. Show me through dreams and open visions. Show me by the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Show me by me sensing and feeling what people are dealing with and what has come into the mess. Allow me to understand that it's not me when I'm feeling somebody else's pain. But allow the intercessor in me to come forth. And allow me to have a close relationship with you to the point that I know your voice clearly. I know that you are the living God. And if you are a living God, then you do living things. You talk. You speak. You see. You hear. You smell. You feel. And you are moved to action by all those. Sensitize me in the spirit that I might be the same thing. Because you said in your word, let us create man in our own image. And it is your goal for us to be transformed into the image of an eternal being that knows eternal things that have implications on the earth. Because your word declares, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, in earthen vessels, as it is in heaven. And God, give me this day my daily bread, daily allotment of spiritual supply that I might know how to survive and create survivors in your kingdom there's a sense the senses haven't been trained and God may not have dealt with you even in this vein as of yet but I pray from this day forth by the wording of this message that God himself begins to deal with your spiritual senses to give you a state of heightened sensitivity to him so that you can discern their own ignorance to realize the voice of God and his movement or spiritual things has been a hindrance. For a while, God no longer wants us to be hindered by those things that we need to know. They may be dealing with issues themselves of unresolved sin in their own lives or unrepentance and are missing the sounds for that very reason. God wants us to clean up shop so that we will not miss 
the voice of God. Listen to what Moses says to Aaron. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery or those who are being overcome by the enemy, those that are being defeated and destroyed. Neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overwhelmed or overcome. But the noise of them that sing do I hear. The skilled leader exposes what's really going on and the truth of what's being heard. The sound behind the sound and the actions that equates to the actual sounds that they're hearing. This is from spending quality time in the presence of the Lord. Prayer, worship, listening. Prayer, worship, listening. Communing with God, talking to Him, fellowshipping with Him, and praising Him, and waiting in the presence of the Lord until He had sharpened one's ears and quicken it and spiritual senses that they will fully know how to function in this new realm of newly learned possibilities all in an undistracted environment had they learned this that's why it's crucial so vitally crucial that a true lead of God gets away alone with God and learn his voice. The discerning leader was able to give clarity to the sound that they heard coming from the camp of God. This leader is not only sees but hears what no one else can see or hear. And because they can hear and see, they understand the seriousness of the sounds and are moved to corrective action. They know what the sound means, can hear the varying wave patterns, static, and modulations that let them know what's truly going on in the atmosphere around them. They can hear the cry of desperation and agony that others miss because they are equipped to hear. The noise of joy, singing, rejoicing, deceptiveness, happiness was a sound of a lie and having been hatched in the midst of God's people. Now Moses being dispatched by the will of God to address. And the noise in this case, if left unchecked, will lead to the destruction of the entire Hebrew community. By the ravages of the sinful nature, it was a noise that had to be dealt with and brought under control quickly. Hence, God tells Moses what the problem is. Moses communicates to his servant what the problem is. Moses descends the mountain and deals with the problem. And he deals with it by first approaching his own brother. Leaders, we must be willing regardless of who the persons are, regardless of how close they are to us, even if it's our own flesh and blood, we must be willing to deal with them where they are. There have been multiple times that I've had to approach leaders in the church and out of the church. Some of them were my pastors, but God exposed some things and I had to address them. God exposed some things and even friends of mine that I've had to address. God exposed some things in my own self to me that I had to address. And God exposed some things and even my loved ones close to me that I had to deal with and address. And none of those situations are pleasant. And even leaders that have served under me 
None of those situations are pleasant. But understand, when God exposed to you to deal with something, you're dealing with a potential leader. And you're dealing with it with the love of God for the express purposes of securing their future and their role in the will of God for their lives. Moses now is back in the camp, and we'll close here. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot. And he cast the tablets out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf, which they had made, and burned it in fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the waters and made the children of Israel drink of it. Moses' righteous indignation and the wrath, burning wrath, because he's burning with the anger of God. Understand when God burns in his anger towards us. It's because he loves us. And there is a movie that I often watch. And it's still yet popular now. Where the actor makes one vital statement that has stuck with me. And it's everything that God does for us. Is because he loves us. When a father or parent truly loves their children, they will bring correction and discipline into their lives so that they will not continue in an error or in a lie. That is not the will of God concerning us. God's will is that we walk free and clear of anything that will cause us to forfeit our purposes for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And he did so by destroying the idol they created, pulverizing and causing it to become as fine as dust, and causing the people to drink and to taste how vile this very thing was. That the remembrance of their actions would be in their minds and their hearts forever. And the next one he addresses is his own brother Aaron. Why did you allow these people to lead you to do this thing? And he dealt with Aaron first because Aaron was the man left in charge, a future high priest that God wants to establish his ways and laws in their hearts. I admonish you, leaders, potential leaders, look at the larger picture. What will your future be? One, that is marred by errors, or one that is pristine by the righteousness of hearing the correct sounds and making the proper decisions. This is the word of the Lord. We could go more in detail, but I feel the presence of the Lord lifting this evening. Let us pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for this word on today. And we pray that your people will gravitate towards it and hold it in their bosom wholeheartedly and live according to it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. We at Faith Hope and Love Ministries and Retreat Services International wish to thank you for watching us on social media. If the word of the Lord has been a blessing unto you, Consider subscribing to our channel, letting your family members and friends know that the word of the Lord is being declared on social media. God bless you and have a wonderful day in the Lord.